Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a rough episode. <laughs> it's much too early. Seven it's, takes later. It's only 11 o'clock <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to Hidden Testimonies. Uh, my name is Mario. I'll be your host. The point of this uh, podcast is to give a platform for those who want to share their testimony and what God has done um, in your life. And today I'm, I'm really excited for, for the guests that we have on today's show. It's going to be an in-person. So if you're just listening and you have the opportunity to check out the YouTube channel or watch the video on Spotify, I highly recommend um, that you look at these, these fine faces here. I'm getting <laughs> trying to be humble here. But uh, no, today we have a f- phenomenal uh, episode. I'm really excited to, um, you know, hear from from our guests today. But before we get into that, I just want to first and foremost uh, thank everyone for listening to the previous episodes. You know, we have uh, I have received uh, great commentary, great feedback. We're always exploring myself. I'm always exploring ways we can make this podcast grow. Right now, I'm, I'm thinking of just the fastest way to get to 21 episodes. So I'm trying to find 21 guests here. So if you want to be a guest on the show and you want to share your testimony, you know, find me on, on Instagram, esc- eh, esc- uh, testimonios underscore escondidos, write me there or find me on my other social medias. Um, and if you feel like you've got a testimony to share, Let's connect. Let's make it happen because I know God's going to... Ultimately, I just want him to receive all the honor and the glory. And before getting into the episode, I also want to wish everyone a merry, merry uh, Christmas. It is a uh, beautiful time to spend with family. My wife and I have the opportunity to come here in North Carolina where she grew up. And um, we're going to be... We've spent here already five days, three more days (laughs) spending here till we go back home to Tennessee and it has been an awesome, uh, awesome five days. We've been digging into the Word. My my mother-in-law put um, all of us at the beginning of December to do, you know, this challenge where we read the book of Luke. Now we're starting in uh, Galatians, and it's just amazing when you just sit down and read read the Word of God. But uh, and and we're probably probably going to be talking about that today. But Ooh, with that being said, here um, I'm, I really want to introduce you know today's guest. Uh, my fantastic uh, sister-in-law, um, wife to my brother-in-law, <laughs> Jesus uh, Sanchez, but I'm here with Catherine Sanchez, and uh, first of all, congratulations, Thank you. Uh, everyone who's going to be hearing this, watching this. She just entered her second trimester yes. for her second child, whose name is going to be? Jake Owen Sanchez. Jake, Jake Owen yeah. Sanchez. And so... Another little boy. Yeah. I love that I've been able to, you know, my wife and I have been able to spend time with Mateo and just yeah. uh, amazing bundle of joy, always laughing or screaming or every <laughs> or pooping or farting or everything else <laughs> that comes... All things babies do. <laughs> all things baby do. But no, it actually really yeah. is awesome. And I love that you are... You are training your child in the ways of the Lord, and I know Absolutely. that that is that actually is part of your testimony. Where mm-hmm. I know you and I have had had conversations where you always grow back to well, when we we grew up, mm-hmm. our parents were very careful mm-hmm. on what they would allow us to watch, what they would allow us to ingest, um, because what goes through the canals of the ears, what goes through the the canals of the eyes, are really yeah. important. But before we get into that, yeah. you know, just tell us. In the audience, just a little, a little bit about yourself. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, as he, as Mario has already mentioned, um, I'm with my second child, my second son. Um, we just recently found out and announced to everybody we're having a boy. Um, and honestly, being a wife and mother has been one of just the greatest testimonies of my life. Absolutely. I mean, God created it, and it's such a good design, and everything about it has just been such a blessing in my life. And even from meeting my husband to bearing his children and having little hymns and little us's, uh, I can just see God in everything. And I think my relationship with God has grown so much more because I've grown an understanding of how God sees us and how God loves us. And I don't think I fully understood unconditional love until 
honestly, until I had children. Um, I think a lot of people get married really for themselves, just to find someone that fits them and makes them happy. Right. And even at a young age, I knew that that's not what I wanted to do. I knew um, there's too many marriages that I would see and hear. They were like, I wish I did it differently. I wish I saved myself. I wish I did this and that. And I was like, well, why is there nobody saying I did it right and this mm. is great? And I'm so thankful I have a marriage. And I wanted that kind of marriage and that family yeah. to have a testimony that this was the right way to do it. And I'm so thankful I did it this way. And so even at a young age, I researched how did God create marriage? What did he intend it to be? And to my surprise, there was really nothing about finding anyone. It was just being someone to someone else for the rest of your life and loving them and serving them. Mm -hmm. And I think we see that as a degrading thing in our culture to it, submit it. to someone, you know, and it's, it's not, honestly, it's the most rewarding thing. And it, one of the biggest blessings truly that anybody could ever go through is learning how to just truly love someone selflessly and unconditionally and when I got married that's when it all kind of made sense and because it's it's hard to, sometimes because when you have pride in the picture um, that's what makes it difficult and so I wonder speaking on some of the points that you said here yeah. it's it's you said at a young age like what age are we talking where you middle school, middle school so yeah. we're talking 10 11 12 13 yeah probably. It's so, so this is probably something, I don't know if it's culture or just innate, yeah. but like marriage to man, to me, never <laughs> was even uh, a remote thought that I had. Really? No. Yeah. And, and I don't know if it's because where, where, where I came from with, uh, you know, I saw my mom have one failed marriage, mm -hmm. four years single, and then have another marriage that had some really rocky, rocky points in the beginning. And, mm -hmm. you know, praise God, she is still married to her second husband, almost completing 20 years uh, yeah, with him, awesome. which is amazing uh, by itself. But uh, I wonder if it was the good example that you had, mm -hmm. which made you desire it, or I'm curious, yeah. were your, did your brother follow suit and looking an idea? Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, is this a conversation you ever had with him? Because you, you have a, you know, you, you, have a, you have a brother in the family yeah. about your age, was yeah. he was he like when he's like eleven or twelve? Was he just like, man, I wonder what my wife's gonna be like? Or is it just? Yeah. Do you think it's just like a like a just a culture thing where where just girls are so focused at a young <laughs> age? I mean, it is everywhere. I mean, question. I've got I, I, little little girls in my church. Yeah. You know, they're they're five six. They're talking about like ooh, uh, you know. Uh, Boy doll's gonna marry girl doll. You know, it's like they're already just, <laughs> just saturated marriage. with like yeah. I wanna have children, I wanna get married, and us boys, we're just like, bro, like yeah. what's the next good video game we're gonna binge <laughs> on for the next, you know, when exactly, are we meeting yeah. up with the boys? Like we don't even think about that. Marriage, yeah. So I'm curious, what what do you think it is more? It is more as the good the this is where it's that, it's that nature versus nurture. Was well, yeah. because you were nurtured around a healthy marriage? This means why you desired it? Or do you think yeah. it's by nature? Do you think it's a little, bit, a little mix of both? both? Honestly, yeah, I think it is a little both. I mean, I wouldn't have these conversations a lot with my brother, probably now that we're older, but not not that young. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, maybe it's just a girl thing. You dream about your Prince Charming and who you're going to marry and who you're going to be with. And it could be cultural too. I mean, everybody's wanting to find love and it's exciting right. and it's thrilling. Um, but my parents, absolutely, I had such an amazing example of what a God-honoring relationship looks like and I definitely wanted it. Mm -hmm. But they were also a part of the couple. They were always so transparent with us and just, um, they're like, we wish we did things differently and they always encouraged us to do better than them. Mm -hmm. And I love that they never wanted us to be them, but to be better. The standard was never them, it was Christ. And that's kind of what made me seek it out. And I knew God from a really young age, so I think that also played a role in it. Absolutely. I really wanted to please God, and I wanted to do things His way. And I think out of all my siblings, I probably was a little bit more obsessed with it than anyone else. But I was like, well, I, I want to do it God's way, and I want to do everything God's way, and mm -hmm. I want to be prepared. So I think a lot of it was just God just leading me where He wanted me to go and preparing me to save myself for my husband and my family so that I would 
loved them. And it was awesome because I got to share my teachings at church several times and just what God's called us to and living a pure life and what that means because it's not just sex. It's, it's really just pure in everything that we're doing. And it was just such an amazing part of my life that I really think led me to where I'm at. So I think it's a little bit of everything, just being a girl that's excited about just being married being and what a bunch of healthy weirdos. marriage. <laughs> what a bunch of weirdos, all I'll say. But no, yeah. my, um, you know, my wife had had a really healthy, um, you know, example yeah. as well. So really, when I when when I get on the theme of marriage, for me, it took me, and I know this part something you wanted to talk about in, in this episode. And hey, we're just gonna go right into it, but. <laughs> You know, marriage for me, it it really took a long time for me to really understand, first of all, what is marriage? Is it necessary? Is this something that God really wants for me? What will my future wife look like? What what are some qualities she would carry? And so for me, when growing up, you know, marriage was just not celebrated. Mm -hmm. And I actually just watched a video yesterday, and it it goes straight into what we're talking about today. This pastor was talking about, he said, all of us want to make dating look cute. (laughs) Dating should not be cute. (laughs) Marriage is cute. You can have all the cute moments for the next 50 years with your partner. Dating is about having the tough conversations and figuring out, is this person the one God has for me or not? Yeah. And so we've, us as a culture, we've, we've flipped it. We make, Mm. we make dating cute. Nothing needs to be exposed. But then when we get into marriage, Everything yeah. then gets exposed, yeah. and we f- and and then it becomes ugly. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So, like for me, example, I you know I that was something that was so important for me that when I was going to find a partner, right, that I wanted to make sure that they knew my past. Like mm-hmm. it, for me, it was so 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 important. Yeah, and these were going to be incredibly tough conversations because I did not walk into marriage pure. I had walked into marriage or I had, you know, when I was seeking for, for my, for my wife, I did not walk into it pure. I had already yeah. tasted the world multiple times and I came in with a lot of baggage. And on the flip side of the person I found had not tasted any of it. So for me, mm-hmm. I'm already kind of walking in with this baggage and guilt, like, man, do I even deserve this person? Shouldn't yeah. I find someone who's kind of like already done the same path as me? But it's amazing. Uh, God transforms, you know, God takes what the what the devil meant for evil and he turns it for good. Mm-hmm. Hello. Uh, was that plug in elevation words are there? <laughs> <laughs> but no, he yeah. that that's what that's what he does. Mm-hmm. And 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 yes, we, we we came together, but I remember, of course. I wanted to get to know her first, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to get to slowly, you know, dip my toes in the water per se. Yeah. Obviously, you know, yeah. not speaking of anything physical or anything, but just like, hey, I want to know a little more about you. What What are your desires? What are your goals that you have? Mm-hmm. Do you really love God on the same level that I love him? Or if you don't, is that something you're open to? And so fortunately, my, uh, you know, God revealed my wife, Anna, ready to go, ready to, to, to join together. But mm-hmm. I remember during our season of dating, so talking about having those tough conversations, mm-hmm. and, I, and I was totally in agreement with what this pastor said. Mm-hmm. It's like, yes, well, once you find someone, once you get married, once it's official before God, dude, make all the cute memories and everything yeah. else that you want, right? Yeah. But in dating, like, there are needs to have those tough conversations. So I remember specifically, you know, having to reveal a very – dark part of my past. Mm. And I remember just like like not being able to sleep. And at this point, mm-hmm. we've already been talking about six, seven months here. And I was like, okay, yeah. I think it's time to I really start. And I probably shouldn't have, have waited that long, to be honest. But for <laughs> me, I was a little selfish. I'm like, man, she's probably going to judge me. I'm probably not, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I, I just want to like get a, get a hold of her a little bit and then yeah. slow. And then I remember, I remember saying, I said, uh, I remember writing, writing this in my journal. I said, the woman that can handle my past will be the woman for my future. Mm-hmm. And so I remember when I, when I un, like unloaded what I had been hiding and everything and told her, like, look, this is, this is, mm-hmm. this is real stuff. Like, this is where I come from. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember she, like, was very shocked. Yeah. And she's just like, but, you know, I, I, I still want to be with you. And I was like... I thought for sure when I had that conversation, <laughs> Catherine, that that was that was, that was it. Wow. 
that was it. I said, all right. I mean, eventually I'm going to have that conversation. Yeah. I, I, I told myself I refused to walk into marriage, mm. not revealing every detail about me. Mm-hmm. Right. And I caused this upon myself. All right. This was mm-hmm. my stupidity. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I said, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to have someone be surprised and yeah. find out something, some dark detail in my past and be like, why did you never tell me? Yeah. It's like, nope, you're going to learn everything now. Yeah. And if you accept me like that. Yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm all here for you. So what would you say about that? Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, let's talk to you and your husband. You know, did, <laughs> did, did those similar, did those trajectories kind of do the same? Did you do things backwards? How, how was your, when you were courting with, with, <laughs> with Asus? My hubby. Um, honestly, if you can't be honest during dating, what makes you think you'll be honest when you get married? Mm. I mean, it's, it's true. You need to have a safe place. And for me, I think the focus I think it's hard to share things about your past when you still connect yourself with them and you see yourself through them. Hmm. So for me, it wasn't really hard to share my past with anyone. and I'm pretty much an open book because I know it's not who I am. And I can love people through that. Like when, you know, when Jesus says to love people like yourself, you know, it's, you know, when I understand that God loves me and I'm not the things that I've done and I'm not living in that anymore, Mm -hmm. then I can look at Jesus when he shares things with me and I'm like, oh, that's not who you are. And it's not really a big deal to hear about somebody's past. But I think that's what's important about really being yourself and knowing who you are really before you get into a relationship. Mm -hmm. Insecurity will ruin your relationship before it started. And I think a lot of people don't focus on that. They're just focusing on finding someone because whether, and I've done this before, I didn't want to be alone or because you're you're insecure, you want someone to fill in those gaps to maybe somehow make you feel confident somehow Mm. when really that's what Jesus needs to be. And if you're looking to someone else to fill those gaps, they're going to let you down and your relationship will get really toxic really fast. And I've been in those relationships before. Um, But once I took a season, and that's kind of where I think Jesus and I were at before we met, is we both were in a season of singleness. And those are beautiful scenes. It's like being single and allowing God to mend you and make you into the wife or husband that you're going to be to someone is really important. I mean, we waste those seasons just trying to fill our lives with crap that we don't need at all and we shouldn't be putting in our life instead of just fill it with Jesus so that you're ready that when your spouse comes, you'll be ready for them. Mm -hmm. That's really important. I remember somebody telling me once that... When you get married, it's you're running at Jesus with everything you have, and then one day you'll look over and your shoulder will brush someone that's going in the same direction. Ooh, and I feel like that's Jesus that. and I. If you're both going at Jesus, eventually your paths will cross, and that's where you want them to cross. And even though I, I did mention earlier that God had showed me, you know, about the importance of keeping myself pure, Jesus and I unfortunately didn't. We both had partners before, mm-hmm. um, unfortunately, and for me it wasn't. Even an emotional thing, it was just something to just, it was just lust. It was just pleasure. And it was just one night stands until I met him. And then there was nothing about it that really felt like a connection. But then once I met Jesus, I actually, that other guy was still in the picture. Mm -hmm. And I ended up cutting it off. And I was like, actually, this guy is really good. And I want to take this seriously. But I was in a season, that's why taking God seriously is so important. Mm -hmm. And I was in a season where I had left the church and I was caught up in a whole bunch of things I shouldn't have been caught up in. And I regret, and Jesus and I both regret, that we weren't able to give ourselves fully to each other. But what you said is when what Satan meant for evil, God can turn for good. Mm -hmm. Um, And in this, God has still brought so much good out of it because sex is not marriage. (laughs) And it's not everything in it either. There's so much more to marriage. And I think God was able to use that to show us what true love is. Mm -hmm. And when I met Jesus, I was kind of telling you this the other day too, that um, with past relationships, it was passionate and it was secretive and it was thrilling. But then when I met Jesus, it wasn't like that. And I questioned it because it was just so different than everything else that I had tasted and experienced. And everybody would ask me, do you know if he's the one? Yeah. And I was like, I don't even know what that means anymore Mm -hmm. (laughs) at this point. And I would pray and I'm like, God, what, is this the man you want me to marry? I obviously want to please God. I want him I want what God wants for me. And if he's it, great. And if he's not, not. And God never gave me a direct answer like, yes, this is the one that I've created for you from the beginning of time. Yeah. It was just trust me. That's what he kept saying. And I'm like, God, that doesn't help. <laughs> that mm. doesn't answer the question. But it did, actually. It did. And eventually when we got engaged, I was like, God, is and I really struggled when we got engaged. Like, is this the one? Because marriage is a big deal to me. And I'm committing my life to you in this man. It's got to be one, one, one and done. One and done. And so I took it really heavily. Like, God, mm-hmm. I want to make sure this is the right man. And I, I was really stressed out when we were engaged. 
and really torn on the fence. And then that's when God had revealed to me that your past relationships, the reason it was thrilling and it was fun was because it was lust. Mm. It was you getting something. Lust is self-centered desires. That's why it's so fun and it's thrilling, but it was also toxic, you know, because Mm. once you're not getting what you want, then you look for the next best thing. And sometimes that's what, you know, why porn is so thrilling for people is you, it's fun at first and then you have to go deeper and deeper and deeper to get the same pleasure. And we use people all the time. But with Jesus, I really loved him. And that's what God was showing me is I'm trying to show you the difference between lust and love and how much greater love is than lust because it has nothing to do with you. And I don't think people think love, love is not about us. It's selfless and it's unconditional. Yeah. And then take yourself out of the equation. And it's not whether Jesus is loving me perfectly or not, whether he does the dishes or not, whether he's in a good attitude or not, whatever it is, I'm going to love you. And I'm going to sacrifice for you, and I'm going to be here for you, and I'm going to hold you up, no matter mm-hmm. what. And it doesn't has nothing to do with him. Yeah. It has everything to do with Jesus. And that has transformed me so much by learning just what true love is. And that is so much more thrilling than lust, honestly. Mm-hmm. And it's so much deeper. It's so much more passionate. And when Jesus and I both, when it clicked for both of us, I think we have the most amazing marriage in the world now. Praise and him. I love our marriage. And I love being married. And I want to be that married couple. Like I hear all about the honeymoon stages. And I, I think it's a honeymoon stage is just when you when you want it to be good for a minute and then you kind of let it fall. And I was like, don't let it fall. Let it be amazing forever. I want to be married 80 years and tell everyone it's still amazing and it's still thrilling. And because if God's in the center of it, God is love. And if God's not in it, then it's not love Mm -hmm. anyways. But if he is in it, then you have to have love. It's whatever else you all plug and substitute it. Yeah. And uh, so I don't know if you're going to go. I didn't know we were going here. I was going to wait for you to open up the door, (laughs) but let's go here now. And... Um, you know, you, you mentioned something that, you know, porn is something that, uh, you know, distorts what God had intended yeah. to be only meant for a marriage. It makes it into just a product, right? You consume yeah. it, and on to the next. You consume it, on to the next. So here's another reason why I had, yeah. I had a big pro- trouble with marriage. Not only did I didn't have the greatest examples of marriages mm-hmm. in my life, and I praise God that my mom is still married, and, you know, my, my first dad I grew up with. Um, He has passed away to be with the Lord. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, you mix not having the greatest view of marriage, and you mix that in with the distortion of what porn provides, Mm -hmm. which is is, um, sex is only meant to get pleasure. It is meant for nothing else. And it took me until, I mean, I'm talking just a couple years ago, so we're not talking that long ago, Uh where it was finally revealed to me that and this is me going into marriage thinking like, yeah, this is going to be great. Now I can share that experience with my partner. And it was all about yeah. just receiving pleasure and not realizing that, hello, dummy, <laughs> this is to create. Yeah. This is to create. That's the only purpose yeah. that it serves. And when you really think about it, it's kind of like a nasty thing to do anyways, you yeah. know, but, but, it, but it, it's, it comes together. It's a spiritual, emotional connection. But at the end of the day, God says, be fruitful and to multiply. And that's the only thing that, that it, it, it serves. Mm-hmm. While it can be pleasuring, it can be, it, 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 you know, certainly my wife and I ex, uh, experience it and love it together. Mm-hmm. And I remember, you know, not having any guilt when we first shared that experience because like, oh, now I'm inside marriage. <laughs> like before right, I would yeah. do that yeah. and I'd feel so guilty, shameful. I was like, gosh, why did I do that? Yeah. Like it, it's like thrilling up until the point and then after everything's past, you're like, gosh, I feel gross, nasty, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, you're just, you're doing it. Just, you only did that to please yourself, right? Yeah. You were in no interest in the other party, and they also did the same thing to you. So we're mm-hmm. using each other, and then we get away, Yeah. right? And then yeah. the, the beautiful thing, now that, now, you know, I, I, want, I want to let you know something that we're, we're letting you and Jesus just get a head, get a head start because when, <laughs> when me when me and Anna get going, it'll be bam, bam, bam. It just with kids. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. We're just letting you all get a head start. Like oh, oh okay. you know, we'll just let you all Thanks get a head start, us. and then we we'll start bam, bam, bam. <laughs> <Right. laughs> so mainly, God gave us the head start. <laughs> it wasn't. That wasn't our plan. <laughs> oh man! But it was great. But no, we're my wife and I believe we're we're getting to uh, we're. It's coming. Yeah. It's it's coming yet, yeah. and it, and, yeah. the, and the and the beautiful thing about it is it's never it's never been stopped. It's just like hey, you know, if yeah. God's timing is going to be perfect, you know, yeah. there's been a reason. And now that we look back over the past, we're coming up on five you know five years of marriage, wow. and it's just like 
yeah, everything's kind of happened because we still had to work on some things within us. And had we had yeah. to to do that while having a child, while it's still possible, it's been yeah. extremely tough, extremely tough. And I don't want, I don't I want guess either. Jesus and I were just, we were just so perfect. I just thought <laughs> literally we were ready for kids. Jeez, <laughs> and you said, God, we already checked this check box, so let's just, yeah. yeah. But no, it was like what two months into your marriage. Yeah, we got pregnant. It's crazy. And that, yeah. And then now, a year and a half later, you're like, oh, we'll just throw in another one. Throw in another one. Yeah. And then another year, we might do another. I don't no, know. but it is amazing. <laughs> it is amazing when you start learning. And this is something that I want for my children, right, mm -hmm. is I want them to see a great example of marriage Absolutely. so they can immediately desire for a good partner, mm -hmm. you know, for life. Not a mm -hmm. partner for a moment, not a partner for a night, not a partner for a season, but it has to be for life. Absolutely. That's what that's what marriage is. and yeah. And... You know, unfortunately, a lot of people just take it too lightly. And again, at the end of the day, yeah, we were talking last night yeah, about desensitizing everything. Porn de desensitizes what sex is, yep. what it should be for. Um, you know, uh, video games and movies desensitize what a life is, killing, yeah. right? And um, a byproduct of, of you know, uh, consuming... Uh, pornography is it desensitizes you to what marriage should mm -hmm. be, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, it is it, there's, it's not even it's not even even in those scenes that they 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 make their marriage is not anything. It's like mm -hmm. random acts of things that don't happen in the world. Mm -mm. These the it is total fantasy. Yeah. It is totally it's, so it's yeah totally makeup lights camera action. This would mm -hmm. not be a real world scenario. But mm -mm. again, you consume and you start believing it. Like yeah, I should be able to just yeah. pick up anybody, you know, and then right. then you find yourself in jail, you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, and oh so it's, uh, it, you know, speaking of that, you know, going down the rabbit hole of uh, mm -hmm. finding lust, finding that next hit. I always wonder in the Bible, I was like, why, why did God choose to mention like bestiality and all these like gro <laughs> grotesque things? Yeah, it's because eventually it's humans will not satisfy if you keep going down that hole, and then you start moving to like you know. Things yeah. are just like, whoa. Yeah. Hello. Like the song, it's a slow fade. It, it really is. You start with something so innocent. Yep. And then next thing you know, you're like, wait, I would never commit adultery. And it's like, yeah, but all you do is think about other people, mm -hmm. you know? And then next thing you know, you do it and then you're with multiple partners. And then that yeah. doesn't help. And then, you know, and it's, you don't just wake up one day and like, you know, today I'm going to commit adultery. It's, it's a slow fade. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. And that, that's what sin is. And so it's very important that, yeah. You know, we we set up these barriers in our life. And so yeah. speaking of barriers, you yeah. know, you mentioned something yesterday, and I think it's a great testimony for maybe a young mother out there mm -hmm. um, or, or a, a, you know, a potential, a potential young lady that would hear this message, mm -hmm. um, you know, who eventually want to have kids. You talked about, you know, you will not let your baby watch certain things <laughs> because you yeah. were taught that. Yeah. Go into a little bit about that. What's your testimony when you were growing up? How did it make you feel yeah. that you weren't able to like do the things that maybe some of your peers were doing? Yeah, honestly, I, when I was younger, it was I didn't really care. But when you get older and everybody's watching all the movies that you're not allowed to watch, then I would get a little upset. And then we would all sneak movies in anyways. Mm -hmm. um, but I would feel guilty. But my parents' the ideology was, I hear a lot of adults say, well, we'll just wait till the kids aren't here and we'll watch it. That's an adult movie. You can't watch that. And my mm -hmm. parents thought, if the kids can't watch it, then you shouldn't be watching Ooh. it. And Hello. that's what my parents would now. always say growing up. And we never heard cuss words to the point where my dad bought this software where he would re-record the movies and it would take out all the language and everything. Mm -hmm. So now that I'm older and I watch these movies, I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much junk in it. And I never knew it because I've ne I never heard a cuss word in my house. I never mm. heard or saw anything inappropriate in my house. Yeah. And honestly, now that I'm a parent, I'm so thankful I can trust that my kids can go there. Mm -hmm. And they won't hear any cussing and they won't see anything inappropriate, you know, because now I'm like, wait, there's junk in every th corner and it really affects you what you yeah. look at, you know, and my dad would always say like, just because you can, you know, change the sex scene or cut it or skip it or whatever, you still saw it. And that's, you know, where I started struggling with porn was because I saw something and it was so quick and it was so innocent. And then it played through my mind and I was so young, I didn't understand what was playing through my mind, yeah. but I understood that it felt good. Yeah. 
Um, and that's why we shouldn't be chasing feelings either. It planted something there. It planted and then it something. Grew. Mm-hmm. And then next day, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking at stuff. I'm like, why? Did, how did I get here? And I was so appalled with myself and what mm-hmm. I was looking at and how degrading it is. And even as a woman, I was just so disgusted by what they do to women in these videos. Mm-hmm. Um, and men too. It's, it's really disgusting all around. Um, but with my kids, it, I mean, with Jesus and I, we probably weren't watching the best stuff but then once we had a child I realized I'm accountable for him and the man that he becomes and it plants things young if I'm watching inappropriate things now that's going to develop in his brain and I don't want him I want him to save himself for marriage I don't want him to sleep with someone beforehand I want him to find I want him to find a wife that loves him as much as I do and we have to model that for him and so we've gotten a lot pickier now and I think a lot more sensitive when we hear cussing or we see something or even graphic stuff we're just like turn it off I don't even I don't want to watch it I don't want to listen to it I remember ourselves my wife and I we got convicted we have some of our best conversations my wife and I um, on these road trips in North Carolina, like they'll just, <laughs> you got plenty of they'll, time. They'll, yeah. there'll be some things we just don't yeah. discuss because we're just involved in our church and we're just mm-hmm. busy and we should have those conversations daily, but there's just something about when you take a five hour road trip, man, <laughs> wait till you add a I'll kid be listening to, to a podcast. <laughs> I'll be listening to something and then I'll just kind yeah. of get tired of it and she'll get tired of whatever she's doing, you know, and I'm just like, we just start talking and one of our, one of our conversations, you know, we were talking about, you know, uh, Netflix at the time. And, mm. you know, Netflix just released, a, at that time, it just released a movie where Jesus was, you know, apparently homosexual, right? Oh, and it was yeah. just like, just seeing that, I was like, oh, my gosh, how would we, how, why would we support a company exactly. that would even allow something like that? Yeah. I said, cancel it. But yeah. we still had Disney. We watched Disney and everything. <laughs> and, you know, we were... And again, everyone's going to have their own opinion on this, but for myself, I, I don't support the Marvels anything anymore. I've yeah. seen, like, they used to kind of be like this cool superhero thing, and then it's just like turning into this woke garbage yeah. where I just can't, like, it makes me, I remember I was watching the ex- Supernatural or in- Supernatural. That newer movie that came out? Yeah, I don't know. It's like a bunch of, it's like a oh, cast all of. all the gods and stuff? Yeah, uh, I can't yeah. remember what it's called now. Yeah. It doesn't even matter at this point, but. I got to the point where they're, you know, uh, uh, they're displaying the female, the female hero, the main, you mm-hmm. know, uh, mucha, uh, uh, macho person is a female, and she's Latin, and then there's the there's this black guy who ends up kissing another guy, and I was like, dude, yeah. I'm done with that. But I'll tell you the point that where I, I I was done with Disney completely. Yeah, I was watching. I enjoyed. And I'm human. Uh, I enjoyed watching some movies. I enjoyed watching Doctor Strange. I thought it was fantastic. The first one. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah. yeah, yes, it's definitely filled with magic and everything like that. I was like, it's, it's just a very entertaining movie. Yeah. When Doctor Strange 2 came out, Multiverse, there was just, there was a point we, my wife and I went to go watch it. And I was really excited to watch it. I was like, yeah. oh, I really enjoyed Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. I really want to watch this next one. And we were excited about it. It's coming out. We went to the movies and there's this part. Mm-hmm. At the very end, we're like, I don't know, the girl, she turns super evil and is against Doctor Strange. She's trying to, like, take over that specific multiverse. Mm-hmm. And it just gets so demonic where I mm-hmm. was like, like, in that moment, my wife, like, I was almost at the point I was like, I really want to just leave. Like, I don't even want to finish this movie. We end up finishing it. But mm-hmm. during that whole part, yeah, I was just like, we were, we were walking out. And I just like wanted to ask my wife, I wonder if she shared like the same feelings I had just now. Yeah. But like, was that very, and she goes, demonic. That was so <laughs> demonic. Yeah. I said, and I said, yeah, I think I'm, I'm pretty much done here. Like, yeah. there's nothing that Disney now can offer me. Mm-hmm. Kids or no kids, I don't care, to be honest. I don't want to watch that Wonka movie the other day either, but you know, <laughs> I wanted to do it because my wife wanted to. But that's something both and I, her and I both have to work on. But mm-hmm. uh, is Disney part of your repertoire currently? We don't have anything. No subscriptions to anything. That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. Yeah, because they all they all have their stuff. Mm-hmm. And in like what you said, I, I, why would I put my money to that? Like I, I don't understand. So if we don't. If, if I'm not gonna watch it, my kids aren't gonna watch it. I'm not gonna give my money to it. Yeah. <laughs> the spirit of entertainment is a very um, interesting. Um, it yeah. should be so obvious for Christians, but we still, because we're so inundated with it, we still mm-hmm. just battle 
with it. And it's just like, man, like, yeah, I really enjoy watching these channels. I really enjoy, and you know, I'm speaking entertainment movies, but hey, there's YouTube, you know, there's, you know, mm-hmm. like that's my social media, social media. That's my form yeah. where I, I digest entertainment and everything. And to be honest, I've got a testimony now. Uh, I have not realized until the past month how entertaining reading the Bible can be. Right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Just and I think for me, this this idea of reading the Bible in a year was just this huge task that I and I still have not read the full Bible, mm-hmm. you know, and I need to, and I will in Jesus' name mm-hmm. before I die. <laughs> and just read it at least one time through, just yeah. to understand the overall context instead of like bits and pieces and, and create my own you know, doctrine that's been taught to me, something I also learned yeah. myself, but just the daunting task of reading the Bible. It was just like, <laughs> it was just, you, know, you when they say you want to like build a habit, you want to kind of sl- don't do these radical changes because mm-hmm. you'll do, you'll be good for like a little bit. And then those habits quickly come back. Start yeah. with like creating one small habit, dominate that one, and then another, have another habit. Mm-hmm. So right now, what we had the opportunity to do in the month of December is we got to read, you know, the book of Luke, mm-hmm. you know, because there are twenty, there are uh, twenty four chapters in Luke, mm-hmm. and it leads all the way up to Christmas Eve when all of our families would get together, and then we would yep. read the last chapter together. And I remember when my mother in law, Isela, first gave us that challenge, I kind of brushed it off, and I was like, hey, you know what? Let's actually try this. Like, let's actually yeah. get to it. And I remember uh, what my wife and I do as far as putting filters in our lives. Both our phones, with the exception when we're out on vacation, when we're when we're at home, mm-hmm. uh, our phones do do a hard cut off at ten o'clock. Nice. So yeah. there, there's. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, but there's a portion inside iPhones where you, uh, it's in your menu. You do screen time, and then you mm-hmm. can put certain days times that this phone will just shut off. Now yeah. to make it, to make it um, uh, worth, uh, to make it any beneficial, mm-hmm. the password. For her screen time, only I know. Nice. The password for my screen time, only she knows. So mm-hmm. I can't go in and change these settings. Wow. Right? Yeah. And so her and I discussed it. And I remember when we, because we, we first, the reason why it got brought up, we, we realized mm-hmm. it was affecting our, uh, it was affecting our sleep. So yeah. we, and we'd kind of get in bed and we would just kind of like watch our phone for like from 10 to 11, not really mm-hmm. interact with each other. And then when we're tired, we're like, okay, let's go to bed. Oh, we got to pray real quick. And just like, this is very (laughs) just horrible routine. Yeah. And so we started shutting it off at 11. So 11 to 12, we do our thing. I said, let's go even close. Let's let's take it back another hour. Yeah. So let's now let's do at 10 10 p.m. The phone shut off. And so 10 o'clock, it does shut off. Yeah. And so when we started this loop challenge, sometimes if I'm working on a project, like for example, I was doing a podcast one time till Mm -hmm. after 10 o'clock, I said, babe, I need... Like everything just shut down. I need you to, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I need you to open everything back up yeah. with those exceptions. But when we were getting to that 10 o'clock hour, you know, like let's say it was around like 9, 930. I said, hey, babe, you want to go ahead and just, you know, read, read now? She's like, no, wait till 10 o'clock. <laughs> okay, wait till, and then 10 o'clock. And she's like, babe, give me 15 more minutes. I'm mm-hmm. like, no, we got to build this routine now. Mm-hmm. And so after the, it was really just the first week kind of, uh, uh, going through those obstacles Mm -hmm. and then starting to create that routine. And when we started, like, after we got that first week, it was like 10 o'clock came. We're like, we know what we're about to do. We're about to read Mm -hmm. God's word. And so I I, I realize now that after just putting a little bit of discipline, a little bit of my own effort, how entertaining the Bible Mm -hmm. can be, Mm -hmm. you know, because, man, I mean, just the other day, we were just last night, we were reading Galatians three, and oh my gosh, talk about talk about leaving spiritually fat. <laughs> I mean, I had I had yeah. a three chorus meal and it then awesome. some afterwards. Yeah, and that's just one chapter. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And we only focus on that one chapter. But what's been so profitable is not only finding out that wow, God, I don't need, I really don't need entertainment. Mm-mm. I don't need all these things Isn't that to entertain crazy? me. Yeah. God, you already have everything. And I remember I was taking yeah. one guy, his name is Richard. I would I would take him to church and he'd talk about he would just he loves reading his Bible. He's just like, Man, I, I'm 
I don't even turn on the television anymore. I go, let's see what let's see what happened in Samuel today. You know what I'm saying? Let's <laughs> just see what happened yeah, between exactly. the, 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 the Assyrians and the Philistines. Yeah. You know, what what happened here? And and you just start realizing, wow, David and Goliath, like what an incredible story, you yeah. know, or the story of Jonah, man, it was in a whale, belly of a whale. <laughs> um, and you start reading like, wow, this is like a really exciting. And I think you said something to this. When you start reading the Word and you start really understanding it, that spirit of revelation, mm-hmm. it starts becoming a living, breathing mm-hmm creature. When did that moment for you happen where God's mm-hmm. Word wasn't just things we memorize and things mm-hmm. that are probably good for us to put into practice? When did God's Word really become like a living, breathing, whatever you want to call yeah. it? I, in, I've had moments of it in my life because I know I've known God for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like it was recent. It just seems like the tides have changed recently. You know, something's coming, and everybody's saying it. Yeah. Um, I think I think the Lord's coming soon, honestly. Yeah. And he's preparing his people and his bride. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, maybe just like a couple years ago or so, it was like reading the Bible just had a whole new meaning now. It's mm-hmm. not just something you do, but like what you said, it's entertaining, and it brings life, and it's thrilling. And once I get in, I, it's hard to stop. <laughs> I can't. I want to read the whole thing, you know, and... Um, it, that's what it was for me. I just once I started taking God seriously, and I realized, wow, like I love God, and this is His letter to me, and it's for me. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just more intimate. Like I love when Jesus writes me notes. So why would I not like you know the one God gave me? Mm. Um, but once I started taking God seriously, I really think that's when the Bible just started to make more sense. Yeah. And I believed it, and I'm believing what I'm reading, and I'm living it out. And when I can see it playing out now in real life, I'm like, wow, this isn't just words on a page. This is a life to live, Mm -hmm. and it's so much more than just stories, and it's literally from the mouth of God and from His heart, and I don't know, because I love God, I love reading His Word now. Speaking of entertainment, um, Mm -hmm. you know, while while I'm really starting to understand how how enjoyable reading God's Word is, I definitely don't discount what... Have you watched The Chosen at all? Mm -mm. Okay. It's a phenomenal series, <laughs> in my opinion. Okay, maybe some, maybe people have different opinions on it, but let me tell you, I have never seen the stories that I have read on on these pages mm-hmm. really come to life and and to be a a a, a putting again. I'm you and I are both creatives. Okay, mm-hmm. whether it's f- for those who are are listening, yeah. uh, our stories are are very very similar. A musician, she's a musician. Uh, I sing, she sings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, uh, Photo and video, photo and video. Like, probably going to start a podcast, has started a podcast. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Um, We have a a lot of things in common when it comes to the creativity side of things. And so me being a visual person, um, not only in my nature as a man, but just someone who really enjoys Mm -hmm. bringing things to life, bringing a concept, an idea that you can't see and making it the intangible, a tangible thing to watch. The Chosen for me was something that was the first time I was very critical about it. I was just like, okay, let's see how Mm -hmm. accurate this really is. To my surprise, a lot of accuracy comes out of it. Again, it's nothing to replace the Word of God, but there have been some scenes that as I was reading it the first time didn't really register until mm-hmm. I saw like the and I'm not gonna say the Hollywood version but the 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 uh, documented version through a video uh, documentary version almost of it with really great acting and really great camera mm-hmm. and everything and good color grading seeing it come that way was like wow this is like accurate to the text mm-hmm. and now I actually can see what's happening for example what well, for me, and again, this is the decision of everyone else, I highly recommend The Chosen. My wife and I have really, really enjoyed it, but never let it replace God's Word. Let's mm-hmm. let it be a supplemental thing, and then you discern. Like, we, you and I both have the Holy Spirit. We have that spirit of discernment. Mm-hmm. So we take out the things that are clearly maybe just added yeah. and take the things that were actually were. But there's a scene, you know the woman at the well, mm-hmm. the story? So Jesus first reveals himself as the Messiah, not only to a woman, which was very controversial, mm-hmm. but not but to a Samaritan woman, which were literally like, it's literally like what, what Hamas is to Israel, <laughs> speaking in 2023, mm-hmm. right? 
someone or the, or the Palestinians against Israelis, like this was a group of people mm-hmm. that were highly that they had many wars against these type of people, right? All through the all through the Old Testament against the Samaritans and the and the Philistines and everything. And so it's interesting that God first revealed Himself. So reading the story, great. Uh, you know, she says that you must be a prophet of God. You know mm-hmm. everything I've done. He says, yeah, go find, you know, go bring your husband. Like, what do you mean? I've never had a husband. Oh, you've actually had five. You know what I'm saying? Just starts mm-hmm. calling her out and be like, oh, my gosh. And then he kept saying, the water that you drink here, you'll return to thirst. But if you had the water that I give you, you'll have eternal life bubbling and springing within mm-hmm. yourself. And I remember reading that, and there's so much revelation. But when I actually got to see, like, what a really good representation of what that conversation might have looked mm-hmm. like. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it brought tears, tears yeah. to me to just see this woman not only have the opportunity to get have the Messiah be revealed to her, and great yeah. acting can be a <laughs> phenomenal thing. And it, I really like entertainment used that way. Yeah. I would caution, though, with the chosen unpopular opinion, but... Mm-hmm. They support very ungodly things, mm-hmm. openly support ungodly things. Kind of like the reason we don't have Netflix, Disney, and all these things is because yeah. they all support ungodly things. And you think Satan knows scripture too, people. And the entertainment is his industry. And right. I would be really careful. I hear a lot of people when they watch The Chosen, they're like, it fills in the gaps. And I'm like, don't let entertainment no. fill in the gaps. God and the Holy Spirit should do that. Right. But with The Chosen, it's like if they're an industry that obviously supports things Mm -hmm. that are completely against God, and they're supposed to be representing the truth when they don't even believe it. Mm -hmm. What's to trust there? I could see see where you're going with that, and that's been a common argument for people, and that's why I said this is just me personally speaking. You do what you want. And that's just me, you you know. And that's why we don't watch The Chosen. Right. It's because they don't believe in truth, so I don't really care for the representation of it. That's fair. (laughs) But one thing that for me that that it did that did come out of it, okay, mm-hmm. uh, you know, regardless of what their stance is on certain things, when it came to just you know getting to work, this is what they did, and they didn't they didn't display any of the things that they may support inside their work. So I'm looking at just the the body of work itself, mm-hmm. and so like for me, for example, as a photographer, you know, um, I'm very open about what I believe, you know, and mm-hmm. due to my beliefs. I will not do certain types of certain types of work. Absolutely. So I've got a funny testimony here to mention. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever mentioned this, but um, you know, speaking of you know getting into photography, I thought this was a joke when it first <laughs> happened to me. So I have my my photography, his kingdom photography. It actually birthed inside your apartment. I'm not sure I if you, you remember yeah, that. I, I, do. I, I we were we yeah. were all over there, all four of us, my wife, her brother, you know, your husband, and all four. Mm-hmm. Four of us were there, and I remember just sitting out on the balcony. I was like, "Oh my gosh, God just put a God just put His title yeah. for my business that I'm going to start back up photography, His Kingdom Photography." And I said, "God, give me confirmation if this mm-hmm. web t- if this t- um, uh, web URL has not been taken. This mm-hmm. is a sign. This is for me. Sure enough, typed yeah. it in. This website could not be found." Do you yeah. want to purchase this? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, absolutely. So I remember wow. um, when I built my website, obviously the m- majority of the leads I was getting was coming through, um, you know, Instagram. But I did mm-hmm. have some inquiries come through my website, which was fantastic. I put some nice. very general information there, just basically East Tennessee photographer, and somehow people found me. Mm-hmm. Well, I got an inquiry from New York. Okay, this lady was talking, and she says, hey, I w- I want to see how much you know you you would charge to wow. you know do pictures of the brides and things like that, and and I said I remember getting so excited I was like oh babe like I got a lead I got a lead <laughs> like this lady's from New York it was legit wow. gave me a phone number and everything like filled my my um, web page and everything and then submit it to me mm-hmm. and then I go back and I'm like wait a minute take a picture of the brides <laughs> plural <laughs> plural and I said nah I said she's probably you know probably filling a bunch of these things yeah, out. Typo. Yeah. So I remember I had to, you know, mm. b- 
doing what doing what I believe. I won't photograph, you know, uh, homosexuals or anything like that. Not because I don't love them, not that I don't care for them, but like I represent his kingdom. Mm -hmm. and his kingdom is very, very, it cannot support that, yeah. you know. And there's a lot of things I won't do. I won't do any, you know, sensuality pictures or any things like that. Mm -hmm. Things where even if a male model were to come to me and ask like, hey, can you do some, you know, shirt? like, no. no, like that's for someone else. Like I, I want to, I want to, create an image that yeah. glorifies him at the end of the day. But I remember I, I, I was battling with my wife. I said, man, I just don't want to like randomly call and text this lady because it was for her daughter, her daughter to, to do the pictures. And she's just, you know, getting information. I said, well, I'm just going to build a questionnaire, a second questionnaire. Mm -hmm. And the first question I actually put Catherine was, is this union between a man and a woman? Yes. Continue. No, I'm sorry. Um, hmm. this is not something that it's not tough work yeah. that I do, but I can refer you to somebody. Sure enough, <laughs> I sent it out the next day. Nasty text, nasty uh, text. Just yeah, like, I course. can't believe you don't support it. And <laughs> she, she like wrote this huge long email and you know, okay. God bless her. Yeah. You know, hope, uh, you know, I, I really, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish a curse on them at all. You know, God says, mm -hmm. bless those who curse you. Mm -hmm. But I remember just like having that, I was like, oh my gosh. And I'm thinking in my mind, like, you're a web designer. You can go through my whole work. Does anything scream that, right. that I would do anything? Like, I don't mention right. everything's love. I don't have, you know, the the, yeah. the the rainbow flag. I don't have any of that stuff yeah. on my, on my website. You're just looking for something to be mad about, honestly. Oh, man, it was it was incredible. So, wow. But, you know, I said, God, you know, um, that is a temptation there. And I, I could have I could have accepted it, right? Mm -hmm. Clearly I'm yeah, not, but money, I could yeah. have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, that's two. That's, that could have been two, three grand. Easy. Mm -hmm. But is it worth it? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. I, remember another op I remember another opportunity was given to me um, where I also don't shoot on Sundays because I, I have a work and I have mm -hmm. a work in the church and, and I just, I can't do it. As much as I'd love to, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. And so this, you know, this lady was very desperate. Her mm -hmm. photographer's car broke down or lost their she was a traveling photographer mm. coming from Arizona lost all her luggage oh my you know wow. and she, the wedding that they, they were supposed to shoot was coming up that like this she's a, a, this is a photographer referral of mine mm -hmm. a photographer friend of mine giving me her inquiry she's like mm. look I can't do this can you do it and the details are like she's literally ready she's ready to just pay whatever and I just quoted her two grand and she didn't even blink an eye but mm. the problem is I'm going to be out this weekend with my kids for a tournament. I, I can't take it as much as I want to. Do you want it? I said, yeah, give me the details. Sure. She's mm. like, yeah, it's going to be Sunday. Mm. And I was like, it's going to start at 1 o'clock and at 8. Here's the details. She's very, she, you know, she's seen your work. She likes it. You know, I arrived back when you're taking it. And I was like, oh, man. Mm. And at that time, that money was like so needed, mm. so needed. Mm. I said, babe, yeah, if we did this, you know, we could just, you know, uh, we had like one credit card we needed to pay off. I said, this would pay it off completely. And then we'd have some extra, you know, left over. Mm -hmm. And she's like, did you pray about it? I said, no, I haven't. She's like, well, pray about it. So I started praying mm -hmm. about it. And again, my church, we have other musicians. Anyone could have stepped in and everything. Mm -hmm. And I just like, I kept thinking, I was like, I just don't feel good about this decision. Mm -hmm. And I said... I had to tell her, I said, regretfully, as much as I would love to do your pictures, I have to stick with with my, uh, w with the standards that I have for my business, mm -hmm. which is I can't do on Sunday. For me, it's the day of the Lord. Paul says, don't argue. If, yeah. if, someone, if someone wants to celebrate the day of the Lord on anything that's not the Sabbath, you know, let God be glorified in that. But yeah. for me, the Sabbath, the day of rest for us and our family is Sunday. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we do, and that's another unnecessary controversial topic of, oh, it's actually <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's actually Saturday. Unnecessary, but yeah. Oh, but... Uh, yeah, well, good for you for sticking to your convictions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's and I, important. I know you're going to be getting back into it, and, and I think God, I mean, not God, God does allow the Satan to do tempting because everything, like in the book of mm -hmm. Job, right, Satan consulted with God, saying, like, you realize this guy is blessed. Yeah, this guy is serving you because he's, he's the richest among the land. Yeah. He has 10 children. He's got the fattest calves. 
Um, you know, he's got all the properties and the mansions and everything like that. If you took it away from him, I know he'd curse you. Mm-hmm. And so the, the devil's really slick in, in that regard um, of just always offering you something. Mm-hmm. So I guess my question would be just to kind of the last thing to hit here because we have gotten, we've, we've talked about a lot <laughs> of fantastic yeah. things. We've hit on marriage. We've hit on, you know, the dangers of what we consume through mm-hmm. our eyes and ears and entertainment in general. Has there ever been a time mm-hmm. where the devil has presented something that looked very maybe mm-hmm. inside the will of God and not mm-hmm. realizing that it was just a trap? That's a really deep question. I don't know. It's, I think sometimes, like, it's Satan. Sometimes it's you. You know, like, Ooh. James 1 says, God. your own evil desires lead you astray. Wow. And we give Satan a lot of credit. We mm-hmm. really do. But it wouldn't be tempting if you didn't want to do it. You know, let's go. So, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm. Hopefully, I can get this. I've got a soundboard on this. Yeah. Hopefully, I can get that integrated. One day. <laughs> All I don't, the sound I, effects and everything. Yes, I don't want to buy. <laughs> I don't want to buy the, yeah. the, the 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 Soundcaster Pro, which has all that stuff, because that's like a. Two thousand dollar investment. <laughs> I'm not ready to do that. But man, yeah, yeah. that would be like a. <laughs> or have you heard the? <laughs> Have you seen that no, one? No, I've not heard that one. Oh, my gosh. That's my favorite. Wow. That's my favorite. Well, you have to edit that in there. Literally. <laughs> um, but the mic drop moment. Does Satan tempt me? Yeah. I mean, I have one of the new things. I have these weird dreams about, like, other people sometimes other oh than my, my husband. Gosh. And then I wake up that so thinking. Hard. That it actually what? happened. Right? And you feel guilty. And guilt doesn't come from God either. So oh you really God. discerning, like, okay, if you were disgusted by it, then it shows that. It didn't come from God. Oh, and that, man. You know, you notice that, and it's not who you are. And just reminding myself, like, okay, that's not how I feel. I love my husband. Yeah. And just staying stuck in that. I think, you know, there's temptations really every day, and that's why it's important to flee from it. You know, if you know your phone's a stumbling block, turn it off once in a while. Mm. You know? If you know TV's a stumbling block, turn it off, throw it away. Whatever you need to do. My dad, if there was a movie with something bad in it, he would rip it up and throw it away in front of us. I think that's really good to learn that if something does not glorify God, just get rid of it immediately. Don't think twice about it. Chainsaw it. Yeah, because you're going to have things, especially in our culture today, we're bombarded by everything evil. And it can be just simple theologies that look right and they're Mm -hmm. not. It can be, um, and actually one of the verses I wanted wanted to share, it could be the way you pray for people too. Um, And I was going to talk about what really transformed my marriage was really this verse because it really hit me. Or verses. It was James 3, so after I already quoted James 1, but James 3, 14 through 18. Um, it says, But if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Mm. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For whoever, for wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every, every kind. kind. But the wisdom that comes from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism. It is always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. And I was thinking, you know, when I when you're upset or you're tempted or whatever it is, um, especially in, in marriage when you have a disagreement with your spouse, many times we go to God and when someone those don't happen us, in your marriage, right? Because no, so we're perfect. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, now it's really rare. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie because we both just put Jesus in the center. I think the other day we got into a little something and it lasted five minutes and it never really yeah. led anywhere because we both were like, we're not going to let it go So there. when you put Jesus in the um, center, you're talking about when you're laying in bed, you're on the left, and Jesus, Jesus is right on the there. right, and then yeah. Mateo's on the right. Now you're getting it. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes He's I do imagine that. He's always there. <laughs> exactly. Leave room for Jesus, right? <laughs> My pastor always told us that. But, oh, that's but when someone's hurt you and you're talking about blessing your enemies, mm-hmm. and many times we go to God to just 
talk trash about them. And they're like, God, fix them, change them for me, make my life more comfortable, fix my manager because he's not reasonable and he's not paying me enough. And yeah. we're always asking God to fix our lives to make us feel more comfortable. When mm. we pray like that a lot, especially about our spouses and people that, you know, managers. Those whoever. selfish prayers. Um, and they're selfish. And when you're praying selfishly, it says you open the door to evil of every kind. And usually jealousy and selfish ambition really do go hand in hand because you're jealous like this person has the promotion that I wanted. This person looks better than I I do. They Mm -hmm. have the marriage that I've always wanted. And when you find yourself analyzing everything that you don't have, you'll miss out on everything you do have Mm. and you will have a very miserable life. Um, And that's what changed my marriage is I was so focused in the beginning on what Jesus wasn't doing Mm. that I was constantly nagging him. And it didn't hit me until Jesus literally said it. He's like, stop nagging me. And then there's a verse in the Bible about a nagging wife and how like something like nails on, like I'd rather hear nails on a chalkboard than a nagging wife or whatever it is. It'd be better for, it'd be better for a, it'd be better for a man to live on top of his roof raining than for to live inside a quarrelsome wife. Right, in that, and it hit because that verse went right through my mind, and I was like, I don't want to be that. Yeah. That's nasty. I don't want to be a nagging wife, yeah. and I don't want to sound like that to anyone. I don't want to nag anybody. Yeah. And then I started reading this verse, and I'm like, Wow, like I want to love him truly. And yeah. when I finally let go of my expectations and my standards, because that's selfish. Um, I started realizing that, honestly, people around us that we usually have issues with really do a lot more than we realize, yeah. uh, especially spouses. And I could finally see it, like taking that plank out of my eye. Many people take that verse as you take the plank out of your own eye so that you're in a place to judge everybody else. But really, it's take your plank out of your eye so you can actually see. Honestly, <laughs> take the blinders out. It actually off. says take the log out of your own the eye. The log. Before you take the plank out of your brother's eye, take the log, the log out, out, out of, of your, your own. own. You know, And it's not to give you free range to judge everybody. It's to give you free range to really see people, how mm. God sees them, and to really love them. You know, Because we're not above anybody, mm-hmm. and only God is. And everything we do should just be all about glorifying Him yeah. and, getting, and just dying to the flesh, getting selfishness out, jealousy out. Anything that causes you to stumble, just run away from it. It's so much more rewarding when mm-hmm. you can taste and see that God is good. Yeah. Really, like, he's amazing. Good is such an understatement. And everything else is just, eh. Yeah. I, I love everything that you said there. And I'm sure we could comment on I'm sure I could comment <laughs> on that. Another hour on it. Another <laughs> hour at least. But no, yeah. I, I, I feel now we're kind of coming to an end. Yeah. And, you know, you know, first and foremost, thank you for thank you. allowing me the opportunity to, um, you know, do this interview. It's, it's literally, I think definitely through our conversations we've had over the past four or five years, probably mm-hmm. has birthed this moment where I was like, man, I think she, we, we would have like some fire content that would go out there. And yeah, would, you your know first three-hour podcast, you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. It is what it is, but no, mm-hmm. it's 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 wonderful. I'm super yeah. happy for you all, and, you. you know, I have a lot of respect for my, my brother-in-law. Uh, mm-hmm. I love the way that you, you know, you all are the first um, in the family right now of our families coming together who are setting the example mm-hmm. of the precedent of, and this is how we're going to raise our child, mm-hmm. you know, and so we don't, we don't take that, we don't, look that at that lightly we're like mm. okay we're gonna learn from them we're gonna you know <laughs> no the, pressure yeah, yeah well hey well like you said jesus in the center yeah, and, and everything's absolutely. gonna be fine but you know yeah. if your kids are gonna be like you you might as well be like jesus well, mine yeah. as well mine as well yeah. but I, I think that's gonna be it and so you know i, I really appreciate you and we'll probably maybe have another episode or maybe yeah. you start your own podcast I, you definitely you won't have, be a guest speaker all <laughs> You definitely have all the ability to continue that. But with Mm -hmm. that being said, um, you know, let's, I want to thank Catherine Sanchez for being here and sharing what God has done in her life. Many, many things, many, many things to still yet speak about. But, you know, with that being said, um, I want to thank everyone who chose to listen to this, this episode, whether that be a day from now or a month or a year or 10 years from now. I hope that whatever these words, whoever needs to hear this, God will make it happen and and put this in front of them and that they would share it. So with that being said, uh, thank you all for for listening. If you like this episode, you're more than welcome to comment down below. You know, if you don't like this episode, say things. You know, if I should not watch Chosen, just call me out. (laughs) Call them out, everybody. (laughs) No, I'm kidding. But, you know, with that being said, I, I really hope all of you all are blessed. And that uh, as we're coming into 2024, that 
don't focus on good things that will come 24 focus on god things that will come out of 2024 ask him uh to to reveal something new in your life develop great habits that would glorify him and um and and, and clearly listen to the next episode that has to be Mm -hmm, one's mm -hmm. bucket list on 2024 with that being said i love you all and god bless